In chapter 8, we will describe and discuss well completion. Well completion means preparing the well for production. Of course, well completion is warranted only when the well has sufficient amount of oil and gas to be commercially viable. That is why the data from all the evaluations and tests in Chapter 7 were so important. Now, with probable positive evaluations, we are ready to complete the open hole part of the well. This open hole where we conducted our wireline tests and coring can now be cased and cemented to become a closed hole. When we talk about running casing in well completion, we are only referring to the casing that encases the zone or zones of interest in the open hole. These casing strings are referred to as production casing. It is sometimes easy to confuse the function of production casing with those of surface or intermediate casing. Let me explain. Surface casing, for example, is the first casing string to be run when the well is first drilled. As the name implies, this surface casing sits at the top part of the well and is attached to the wellhead. Its primary function is to protect the groundwater formations from contamination. In deeper wells, a second type, called an intermediate casing, is run in and cemented. Where intermediate casing is required, its primary function is to protect and support the hole above the zone or zones of interest. Surface and, if needed, intermediate casing strings are installed during drilling on all wells regardless of whether they are commercially viable or not. Production casing strings, on the other hand, are only run when the well shows promise of becoming a producing oil well. Running and cementing these casing segments are a part of the first steps in well completion. Once the production casing is run and cemented and attached to the surface and the intermediate casing string at the wellhead, these casings form what is known as a close hole or cased hole. This hole from the top to the bottom is now sealed off from the natural fluids and solids that exist in the subsurface. Well completion, however, involves more than running casing and sealing the hole. To complete a well, after the casing is run and cemented, the following procedures can be performed. 1. Perforation. Once the production casing is in place in the zones of interest, the casing is then perforated which means that it will be blasted through the casing string, the cement, and deep into the formation. 2. Stimulation. After perforating, the zone is stimulated so that an adequate production or flow rate of the hydrocarbons can be attained. 3. If needed, the zone can also be gravel packed to stop sand production. 4. Finally, the well is equipped with tubing, packers, and a Christmas tree to control the flow of fluids to the surface. Before I describe each of the above procedures to finalize well completion in more detail, let me take a minute to explain what action is taken when a well is not commercially viable. When a well exhibits no zones of interest or has little commercial viability, it is declared a dry hole. This well is then permanently plugged and abandoned. Called PNA for plugged and abandoned, this procedure requires that several cement plugs be placed in the hole to seal it. In previous lectures, we've mentioned that wildcat wells, wells in areas where no one has drilled before, are more likely to be dry holes. Industry figures suggest that as many as 75% of all drilled wildcat wells are dry. PNA procedures, therefore, can become quite routine in wildcat areas. That said, the rest of this lecture will pertain to the procedures and their functions used in well completion. Although already mentioned, 
We'll again present the three types of casing strings and explain their functions. In addition, we'll illustrate the different procedures and the specific equipment needed to ready the well for production. Specifically, we'll present a brief summary of casing design, casing equipment, cement operation, perforations, well stimulation, sand control, along with the final equipment needed to prepare a well for production. Let's start with the four main functions of the surface, intermediate, and production casing strings with their cement sheaths or covers. First, all three of the different types of casing protect the hole from the mud, thus preventing softer formations of shale from drawing water out of the mud, which then can cause the shale to swell and block or impede the drilling operations. In addition, casing prevents loose surface sediments and other unconsolidated formations from being eroded by the mud system. A second function relates only to surface casing. This casing protects near surface freshwater zones from contamination by deeper saltwater zones. On shore, people rely on these freshwater aquifers. Polluting these aquifers is usually prohibited by law or can create serious environmental issues. Third, all three types of casing, the surface, the intermediate, and the production casing provide a smooth entryway and path for running tools in and out of the hole. Finally, in production casing, its surrounding cement sheath isolates downhole zones so that the different zones can more easily be produced separately. Now, let's examine the standard procedures involved for closing an open hole. The first step in closing an open hole is to drive the production casing string to the bottom of the hole. The casing string is permanently set in the well by pouring concrete into the annular space between the casing and the wall of the hole. Let me point out here that because the drilling string must be able to fit comfortably inside the casing string, the casing string pipe must be large enough to allow the drilling string pipe to fit inside it. Like the drilling string, the three types of casing strings consist of multiple joints but of larger diameter pipe that is screwed together one joint at a time as it is inserted to the bottom of the hole or total depth, TD. Casing strings are run and cemented into place as the well is drilled deeper to protect the hole from further exposure to the circulating mud. The exact number of strings depends on the depth of the well, the relative stability of the formations being penetrated, and the characteristics of the drilling mud. As I mentioned earlier, as each casing string is run, it is run inside the previous string that was slightly larger. Conversely, the diameter of each new string will be smaller than the one it fits into as the casing is run deeper. Imagine those sets of plastic bowls that you can buy at any supermarket where the smaller bowl fits inside a larger one which fits inside an even larger one until you get to the biggest bowl with all the smaller bowls fitted neatly inside. Therefore, to be sure that the casing string fits together properly, it is imperative that the casing program be planned before drilling begins so that the surface hole and pipe can be large enough to accommodate all the strings that will be pushed through it. Keep in mind that the final string must be small enough to fit through all the casing joints while still being large enough to allow oil or gas to flow adequately for its capacity. When inserting the initial casing strings, the drilling operation drills a large diameter surface hole to penetrate unconsolidated surface material and protect sources of fresh water in the nearby water tables. Called the surface casing string, it is usually a few hundred feet deep and runs to the bottom of the hole at the beginning when drilling first begins. Once in place, cement slurry is then pumped down the inside of the pipe and circulated up the backside annular space between the casing and hole. Once the surface casing is in place, drilling resumes. For shallow wells, 
the surface casing may be all that is required before initializing the production casing. For deeper wells or where the formation becomes unstable because of prolonged contact with the mud, an intermediate casing string may be necessary. Very deep holes may require two or three intermediate strings. To establish an intermediate casing, the surface casing must be drilled through using a smaller bit that fits inside the surface casing pipe. The drillable shoe on the surface string and the cement in the bottom of the hole is easily penetrated. Once the sloughing zone is penetrated, the drill string is pulled and an intermediate casing string is run to the existing bottom and then cemented into place. When using an intermediate casing, it is important that the cement rises high enough in the annulus to reach and tie into the cement in the surface casing pipe. It is essential to provide an unbroken cement sheath that covers the entire length of the hole. These steps are repeated as each successive string of intermediate casing is hung from the wellhead at the surface. Finally, the wellhead acts as a seal to seal off the annulus at the end of the casing string. Both the surface and intermediate casing strings are installed while drilling continues to total depth. Once a zone of interest has been identified, it is not cased. This section of the well is referred to as open hole. Basically, it is the length of the hole from the surface or intermediate casing strings to TD. If you remember from Chapter 7, it is an open hole that open hole well logs that identify lithology, measure permeability, porosity, the reservoir thickness, and fluid saturation levels are finalized. Once a potentially commercial viable well is confirmed, this section of the hole is then cased or completed. Called production casing, long string or oil string, this string is set through the producing zone and cemented, ensuring that it is tied to the string above so that there is a continuous sheath of pipe and cement from bottom to top. Later, this casing and cement will be perforated to get access to the producing zone. In zones that do not perforate well, a liner may be run. Unlike casing strings, liners do not extend all the way to the surface, but are hung from the long string as this illustration shows. Liners, although cheaper, may appear more convenient, but in fact are not preferred because they can cause difficulty in running tools past the restriction of the liner hanger. They also can limit the control of water when production begins. Complete casing strings are preferred if conditions permit. Offshore is different than onshore because of the need to run pipe through the water before reaching the bottom of the ocean. When bottom supported units are used, like in an offshore platform, an additional large diameter string called a conductor casing is then first run. The conductor casing is hammered into the seafloor and then extended up through the water to the surface just below the rig floor. This casing becomes a conduit or passageway for the drill pipe and the mud. With floating units like drill ships or semi-submersibles, a guide structure is fastened to the bottom of the body of water and secured to the ocean floor with piles. The blowout preventers are then latched into the guide structure on the seafloor and then connected to the surface via a marine riser. These risers function as conductor strings.